Good morning, uh, good afternoon, good evening, colleagues uh, from wherever you're joining us. Uh, welcome to this uh, second Knowledge Cafe of the Integrated Policy Practitioners Network. I'm very pleased to have you with us. My name is Serge Cato. I'm Policy Specialist in the SDG Integration Team in UNDP. And uh, we work with uh, a coalition of uh, more than a dozen uh, UN agencies on the Integrated Policy Practitioners Network. It is uh, an interagency uh, network uh, of the United Nations uh, that is dedicated to strengthening uh, the policies, the integrated policy support that uh, the UN system provides to uh, member states and program countries. Uh, so it's uh, uh, dedicated to helping accelerate uh, the achievement of uh, the 2030 Agenda and the Sustainable Development Goals uh, by enhancing the practice of policy integration, integrated policy approaches, uh, strengthening the capacities of uh, staff in the UN system and governments in rolling out integrated policy uh, solutions to uh, uh, complex development challenges. The IPPN was launched uh, in November uh, last year, 2021, uh, and this is uh, our second uh, activities involving uh, colleagues uh, across the UN system and beyond. It's a network uh, that is open as well uh, to uh, practitioners, stakeholders from member states, as well as civil society and academia. Uh, we uh, do discuss issues related to how uh, integrated policy support is provided in practice uh, to, uh, to member states and uh, how the UN system can organize itself better uh, to work in an integrated manner uh, in developing integrated solutions, cross-practice, cross-sectoral solutions to uh, development challenges. Uh, today, uh, we're going to be joined by uh, our colleagues, uh, Mary Kenny from um, the Food and Agriculture Organization. Uh, Mary is uh, a food safety, safety and consumer officer at FAO's regional office in, for Europe and Central Asia. She's based in Budapest. Uh, and she's the delivery manager of uh, FAO's regional program of work on transforming food systems and facilitating market access and integration. Uh, she manages the regional program of work on food safety and responding to country needs uh, uh, to develop policies and national food control systems, strengthen value chain operators' capacity to ensure food safety from farm to fork, and to use and contribute to the development of uh, agricultural food standards. Uh, she oversees nutrition uh, work responding to country requests and in engaging food systems work in the region. Um, that includes supports to uh, the regional issue-based coalition on sustainable food systems and follow up to the UN Food System Summit, which took place uh, in September last year, if you remember. So there's been a lot of momentum around the issues of uh, food systems and food system transformation. And uh, the issue-based coalition on sustainable food system in the Europe and Central Asia region is a platform that was established in April 2020. Uh, it advises UN resident coordinators and UN country teams to facilitate a coordinated UN system response for promoting and strengthening sustainable food systems in Europe and Central Asia as key to accelerate the achievement of the Sustainable Development Goals uh, and the 2030 Agenda. So food systems is uh, one of those issues which uh, uh, by it's integrated because it involves uh, uh, stakeholders and other sectors beyond just food and agriculture. It touches on health, it touches on um, livelihoods, uh, it's, it touches on um, uh, management of the environment and it's affected by climate uh, So it's and, and, and disaster as well. So it's one of those policy issues that has to be addressed in an integrated manner uh, and involving a wide variety of, uh, of stakeholders. So we will hear today about uh, uh, the work of the, uh, how the UN system has organized itself at regional level to support country teams and support governments on advancing uh, food system transformation uh, through the work of uh, the issue-based coalition in Europe and Central Asia. Uh, Mary, if you're ready, uh, you have the floor. Um, uh, you'll be speaking, we'll look forward to your presentation in about 15 minutes. I'll just add that uh, we also do have other colleagues uh, that are joining us, uh, uh, particularly um, Arben uh, Kipi, who is the uh, assistant representative of uh, FAO in Albania, as well as her colleague uh, Julie Nam uh, in the country office. 
and um, Marit Nilsis um, from the UN Economic Commission for Europe and Central Asia, uh, who are, is also a member of the uh, Food System uh, Issue-Based Coalition. And they will talk to us as well about their perspective on the work of the, of the Issue-Based Coalition in Europe and Central Asia um, after Mary's presentation. Mary, you have the floor. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> thank you, Serge, uh, for the introduction and, and the, the great welcome. Um, it's a pleasure to join you and uh, your network of uh, policy practitioners. Um, I'm speaking today uh, to representing the issue base, the Secretariat of the Issue Based Coalition on Sustainable Food Systems. And um, I'm also wearing my second hat of I'm an, an FAO officer also, as you said, in the regional office uh, for Europe and Central Asia. Um, I want to today I'd like to go through a few slides just to promote uh, how we are looking at uh, policy coherence and uh, uh, coordinated work around sustainable food systems in the region. Mary? And, uh, yes? Can you put your presentation in uh, full screen mode, please? Is it now? Oh, yes. Apologies. I thought it was. Okay. Yes. So there you see the quick outline. I'll introduce our work, um, the Issue Based Coalition. Um, we'll, we'll also go deeper to a country level experience uh, in Albania. I'm very pleased my colleagues are with us today looking at some of the work undertaken there as part of the um, preparation for the UN Food Systems Summit, and finally some points from our side on challenges and successes uh, related to policy integration. I will keep to the, I note I have uh, 15 minutes and I probably have 14 or 13 now, so I will try to make some key points and, and leave plenty of time for discussion. Um, the issue-based coalition is a, it's a, it's part of the UN reform um, that in, in different regions around the world, uh, thematic coalitions have been formed. And in the region of Europe and Central Asia, we have one of our coalitions is focused on sustainable food systems. Others are on youth, where there's one on environment, um, but our work is on uh, sustainable food systems. And as I say, it's the, the purpose of our issue-based coalition is, to, is that we are a regional coalition made up of eight UN members. Uh, and we are supporting, as Serge said, um, our regional coordinators in the region and the, our agencies at country level through the UN country teams to work with our member countries to drive policy, improve multi-sectoral and coordinated approaches on sustainable food systems, all contributing to the achievement of the SDGs. Um, you see there the eight members um, we were established in April 2020, and um, we have been quite active, uh, particularly in, in 2020, but also last year. Um, we're very much capitalizing on the expertise of several uh, UN agencies that you see there before you and how we support our member countries. Um, before, just a few, one slide on uh, food systems. Uh, again, Serge, you gave us a good introduction to it, and I'm sure many people on the call today are very familiar with food systems. Um, I think we, we need to note that uh, there's a, a growing and a common understanding that food systems are include food supply chains, um, but indeed there are many more aspects of a food system and uh, interlinkages and stakeholders involved. And some of those are shown on the screen, including um, the core food supply chains, how we produce our food from farm to fork to the consumer, but then also um, the food environment, how that food is available, how it's uh, marketed, uh, how it's promoted, labeling, how it, the, the price of food is also very, very important in order to ensure that uh, consumers can access um, a healthy, diverse uh, diet. There are also individual act factors at play in terms of um, consumers, but also those involved in producing our food and trading our food, for example. 
And we know also that food systems have multiple goals they're trying to reach. We're trying through our uh, holistic food systems, we're trying to meet nutritional needs, but we're also very much trying to take care of the environment and natural resources uh, and really balancing social, economic and environmental sustainability. Um, working on food systems at country level uh, does need um, many different um, actors at country level, different ministries, different line ministries are, are involved, including agriculture, but health, social, trade ministries. And, um, uh, and indeed, this is why food systems lends itself to uh, quite a multi-sectoral approach. Also having the public and the private sector, for example, working, working together. And bringing it back to the UN agencies, we all, um, different agencies uh, are working and supporting countries on different aspects of the food system, some related to health, some related to uh, the environment, others on trade and poverty reduction. And so through our issue-based coalition, we are really uh, trying to ensure that um, we are working coherently also within the UN and that our messaging and our support to countries uh, to transform food systems is, uh, is really quite consistent and um, is coordinated as well. And we see the issue-based coalition as playing a key role in that at regional level and then also working down uh, and supporting countries, obviously where the changes have to take place uh, through the UN country teams and through our individual agencies working at country level and getting to all those line ministries that I mentioned that are engaged in food systems. Now, before going to the next slide, we would like to have a, a short poll just to learn a bit more about you on the line. So I'll ask, uh, Nadine to show us uh, the poll. And if you can kindly respond to the question, it's there ahead of you. It's quite a straightforward question. It's asking you, what is your area of work? Are you working in the agriculture and food area, environment, health, ec economy, gender, education, social protection? We just wanted to know a bit more which area you are, you are representing or working on. I can see that the economy line is, is uh, quite strong, followed second by the agriculture and, and food sector. So we have quite a few people on the agriculture and food and also environment. Um, ah, and quite a few on education as well. All sectors and areas that have a, a key role and are really contributing also to our uh, improving uh, food systems. I think maybe everybody has answered, but Nadine, I'll let you tell me when you want to. Uh, so it's really the, the economy line most of you are coming from, but then uh, followed fairly close second uh, by the agriculture and food area, and then environment and, and health also. Okay, thank you. Uh, we will continue then. Um, with the presentation, I'd like to show you some of the activities of the issue-based coalition on how we work on uh, how we work across within the the coalition to uh, coordinate um, our work on sustainable food systems within the UN agencies, but then also how we and how then this is filtered down to to countries. We are working in three main areas. The first is really advocating uh, for work on and, and increasing understanding of sustainable food systems and the importance of multi-sectoral approaches. And on that regard, uh, last year we were quite active. Also, it was the year of the UN Food System Summit. So a technical note on different publications were prepared, a technical note on sustainable food systems um, a lot of outreach also in supporting uh, countries and conveners at country level on how to undertake their dialogues and discussions on um, sustainable food systems at country level. And most recently, we have, we have completed one food system talk, which you can see on our, our website, um, on nutrition issues and why that's important in food system 
And then the next one is being planned, which will focus on aspects related to environment. Um, facilitating knowledge sharing and institutional development and discussions on agri-food systems is another key area. Um, here we um, have, have we've implemented a number of webinars. We also had a regional dialogue which focused on governance and holistic approaches where we were discussing aspects of environmental sustainability and how the agriculture environment nexus is, uh, is interacting. And also on the other main panel on that regional dialogue was on nutrition and, and improving nutrition and healthy diet access for the most vulnerable. We've also set up a community of practice, which is on food systems to facilitate discussions on food systems. That's on the UNFSS website, webpage. And finally, we have a policy paper, which is a working draft stage, uh, but it's out for public consultation on what are the regional challenges and priorities in our region to address, to transform food systems. And the other, the last, the third main area of work that we are working on across the, our, at regional level and these UN agencies is emergency preparedness and different materials. And this is very much in the context of the ongoing uh, COVID-19 uh, pandemic of uh, sharing knowledge, holding discussions. For example, there was the round table organized by the coalition at the last regional forum on sustainable development, um, uh, where we were looking at improving food systems to make healthy diets accessible to all. All our materials are available on the website that's shared with you there and can be accessed and used um, another focus, very briefly, is uh, each year, every two years, FAO in the region issues a, a regional overview of the state of food security and nutrition in the region. And um, we, in the last couple of years, we've been doing that uh, in collaboration with the different UN partners that you see there mentioned on the screen. And uh, this helps us join our policy messages, but also we're bringing together evidence and, and data and information uh, from the different UN agencies and channel it, channeling it through these uh, flagship publications in the region as well. Um, the last one in 2020 was focused on affordable healthy diets and the upcoming one is, is the discussion is around some aspects of environmental sustainability and the agricultural sector. Um, as I said earlier, through these modalities and through the work of the issue-based coalition, we are really combining the strengths of different UN agencies and, and complementing our uh, mandates. Um, we're advocating for sustainable food systems, uh, part of building back better also with COVID-19. Um, we're supporting the even the, the main focus is also supporting policy reform and uh, strategic planning and, um, and also working on promoting consistency on impact assessments of COVID-19 on, on food systems. This was in the early stages of the issue-based coalition. All of this is being done also, uh, was done last year in the backdrop and with a strong focus also on the UN Food Systems Summit. This allows me to give one example a case study uh, from uh, our region, Albania, where um, similar to many countries, a, a member state dialogue was carried out. And uh, this was actively supported by the UN resident coordinator and the Ministry of Agriculture, where four national uh, dialogues or discussions bringing together different stakeholders were held in Albania to discuss uh, key aspects of food systems in Albania. And as a result, a national pathway or a way forward was developed, which is focused on uh, a number of issues related to, um, related to, sorry, I apologize. I related to um, uh, the export potential of agriculture, um, value chain development, rural tourism, the safety and health of the system overall, plant health and, and animal diseases also, environmental protection, climate change mitigation and crisis management. So you can see that the, 
the, the discussions were uh, cutting across a number of important sectors, agriculture, food, uh, tourism, economy, rural economies, environment, and uh, climate change mitigation. So for that reason, again, at country level, there were um, stakeholders from central and local government brought together, including from the government, but also very important from academia, civil society, and um, international organizations. And here in Albania, we saw that the FAO was supporting the Ministry of Agriculture, um, but also with um, UNDP, UNIDO, ILO, and WHO at country level, very much supporting also and uh, bringing in their um, knowledge and expertise. And uh, again, working on this policy coherence and, and discussing key issues in a more cross-sectoral and multi-stakeholder way. Um, so a lot has been done in Albania, but it's also uh, clear that uh, the discussions need to continue. And the current pathway is mainly focused on agriculture and rural development, uh, while wider social and health issues were considered. There was a focus on people-centered approaches, small producers, youth. But it really is the beginning or there's need to continue also the process of discussion and policy integration in this regard and work is on is ongoing on this and um, it doesn't stop there. Um, then uh, I had we had one other chat uh, question if you want to show that Nadine before I wrap up I'm conscious of the time I should be wrapping up any minute. You're doing all, all good on time. I will start the second poll now. Okay, thank you, thank you. Yeah, the second poll is related to hear your views on policy uh, coherence, which we know is a very important area, but also quite challenging. And uh, we asked you to pick two um, of the most important requirements in your opinion for policy coherence at, at country level, let's say. so. We had put forward data and evidence, awareness and mindset, uh, political will, or suitable governance processes. You're only allowed to pick two, so we're interested to see uh, what people feel are the most important in order to push policy coherence forward. Okay, we're seeing that the political will is coming out as the top one, and data and evidence is the second okay and then followed by suitable governance uh, processes okay and i guess in a way if we look at that the awareness and mindset is is kind of linked in maybe to the political will as well in a way um okay good thank you thank you for that but yeah political will is is really top on the agenda we can see there let me wrap up now by uh going to the next Right. Yes, uh, we just wanted again to to, uh, to share a little bit of where we see some of the challenges or some of the successes based on our experience in this coalition since April uh, 2020. Um, we're definitely seeing um, some, uh, let's say, not, it's not a challenge per se, but we need to keep working to ensure uh, we are coordinating um, our discussions within the issue-based coalition and transferring those messages down to the individual agencies at uh, country level. Because sometimes we feel that there might be awareness of the need for different agencies to contribute to sustainable food systems, but uh, it's not always um, seen so clearly by the agencies working directly in uh, our countries. Um, some successes, um, we are seeing a trickle down effect uh, from the IBC, uh, strengthening our common thinking on multi-sectoral, multidisciplinary work, uh, synergies and, and topics where that are key for continued discussion at regional level on policy issues are definitely uh, becoming more Strong, and we're working on them, including school feeding and nutrition education. These are just a few of them, but the agriculture environment interface, um, including financing and policy options for moving food 
away from pure production, but more into greening of agriculture and, and different social aspects as well, and issues related to circular economy. So these are areas where the different UN agencies are working, but again, we see them that there is a value in us working maybe more closely or, or jointly on some of these. Um, improve sharing and use of evidence and data is also being facilitated uh, through our work. At country level then, um, some of the experiences we have on pol policy integration are, as I said, not all agencies see their roles so clearly. Um, challenges of policy coherence or, or at least recognizing that it's a, it's a slow process, it doesn't happen overnight, it's also and then there are different levels in country, country presence. Not all our regional agencies have a, a full have full offices in member countries. But the good side of that is that um, agencies that do have a strong country presence can be a channel for evidence and information from other uh, UN agencies and partners working at regional level. Um, uh, Good, and then what next? Just to conclude, what next for our work? We will continue working on the food system transformation agenda at regional level, um, following up on the UN Food Systems Summit and, and supporting countries like Albania to implement and build on their national pathway. Um, we will continue working with UN resident coordinators and country teams uh, to be able to support policy coherence and integration at, at country level, and further to still and work on some of these uh, ongoing policy priorities at regional level. With that, Serge, um, I hand back to you, and, and there are maybe some points for further discussion uh, among uh, the, the practitioners on the line, uh, but it's really uh, open to um, have any, any further discussion as people see fit. Back to you, Serge, thank you. Thank you, Mary, for that excellent presentation. Um, uh, now this is gonna be the interactive part of, uh, of the discussion. Uh, dear colleagues, please do not hesitate uh, to, uh, to raise your hand or put your, your questions uh, in, the, in the chat. Um, uh, before uh, we hand over to the broader audience as you're thinking through your question, I would like to invite um, our Ben, Kipi, and Julie in the uh, uh, country office in Albania of the Food and Agriculture Organization uh, to talk to us a little bit about how uh, they see the support that they've been receiving uh, from the issue-based coalition and uh, their work on food system at country level. Uh, our Ben, Julie, um, you have the floor. Thank you, Serge. Uh, in Albania, uh, there, is, there are some specific conditions related to the sustainable food systems because all the coordination mechanisms uh, are at the Prime Minister's office through the SDG department. So, uh, so we have a very good collaboration to coordinate line ministries and from the other side, we had a strong support from UN country team, UN resident coordinator, in order to, to, to make all, to implement all the dialogues. But now the problem is a follow-up of that because uh, we have to implement the pathways and we have to include them uh, in, in policy making in Albania and in all the programs of the Albanian government uh, related to different line ministries, so not only agriculture, but also health and social, environment and climate change, economy, etc. So through this department at Prime Minister's office, uh, it is the place where different, all the line ministries are, uh, are coordinated from one side. From the other side, there is a UN SDCF, so the program between the United Nations and the government of Albania, 2227. This is a very good mechanism as well. And it is also this uh, SDG department at Prime Minister's office coordinate with EU delegations. So they coordinate the EU accession of Albania. These are all focused on SDGs. And as far as the uh, sustainable food systems are crucial for SDGs, now the process that we need to follow is to continue the dialogue at all levels, 
starting from the Prime Minister Office uh, SDG Department, because it is expected that with the new government, there will be a new structure of this department. It will be reinforced in order to have better capacity to coordinate with line ministries and to coordinate with UN, EU delegation, and other donors as well. So this is a very good place that we can start retaking the dialogue with the new uh, department, because it may be it will be new people in the department. And after that, we have to break down, to go down with uh, working, continue to work with line ministries, but especially we have to continue to work at local level because during last year, we didn't have enough time to work intensively with local government, to work intensively with uh, uh, private sector at local level. So we need to do it this year. And regarding UN country team, we have four main uh, priorities in the program of UN with the government of Albania. And what we are doing at, in the UN system, we are distributing different priorities, pathways and priorities. We are distributing them according to the priorities of the UN SDCM. So these are more or less how we are moving ahead and how we think to move ahead this year. Serge, is Thank there you. a question or do you need more, uh, more information you can ask us? We are happy to, to give all the information that uh, what we are doing here. No, thank you so much, Robin. That's uh, that's great. Um, yes, a quick follow-up question. There has been you, you've talked about the challenge of, of following up. I mean, we know that there's been uh, quite a lot of activities and momentum around the Food System Summit, uh, and now sustaining that after the Food System Summit. Do do you sense that uh, there's been a greater appropriation by line ministries of of their roles? I mean, beyond the uh, the food ministries. Or the line ministry is a greater appropriation of their role in, in strengthening food systems? Uh, they have been uh, uh, very much engaged, participating, uh, and giving their inputs during the dialogues. But mm -hmm. as I told you, or perhaps I didn't tell you in detail, uh, we have a new government now, which means that we have a new structure of the ministries, we have new ministers as well, and we'll have a new Prime Minister Office Department on SDGs. So we have to take again with them and to put it uh, in our program. But a very, very uh, important tool is the UNSDCF, because through UNSDCF, the UN country team is developing all these priorities of sustainable food systems in its outcomes. And then we go with each line ministry that is, uh, is covering this, uh, this area. For example, if it is a health issue, we go, uh, as UN Council team, we go all together discussing and approving uh, the program uh, with them. I'm very sorry about uh, these disruptions. Um, Arben, you were talking about the UNSDCF, um, which, uh, through which the UN system is organizing its work. Uh, to support uh, um, the uh, food system transformation and collaborate with the government. I also heard that there's a new government uh, that is uh, that is uh, taking office with the new prime minister department, which is uh, um, uh, organizing itself um, uh, to coordinate the work and support to the SDGs. It, it sounds to me like this would be a good opportunity to think about um, how uh, uh, to set up a coordination mechanism for uh, for uh, the work around uh, uh, food systems uh, among line ministries. Uh, it's a point that's also been raised, I think, by a uh, colleague, uh, Zafa Gondal, in the chat, the importance of uh, intersectoral coordination. Um, thank you, Arben, for uh, for that intervention. Moving on with, uh, with the session. Um, I was saying that uh, we have an interesting question from uh, our colleague, uh, Lisa Corbio from the Joint SDG Fund uh, that she's posted uh, in the chat. Uh, and the question is about uh, uh, donors' involvement and commitment uh, to, to, to the issues of food systems. Uh, Lisa, if you're with us, would you like to uh, come in?
Are you there, Lisa? If not, I'll read the question. Um, Lisa's question is, is there a sense of donor commitment to these interventions as a global push for food systems and pathways? Are any members taking the lead? Uh, and might pooled funding mechanisms be a possible avenue to ensure integrated support through resident coordinators and UN country teams? Uh, again, for context, uh, Lisa is managing the UN uh, Joint SDG Fund. Uh, Mary? Would you thank like to you. take the question? Yeah, look, I can have a, a first go at it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Serge. Um, and thank you to Lisa also for the, for the question. Um, I think it's, uh, I think there is a lot of um, awareness and, and interest both at country level, but also right across our region of Europe and Central Asia to continue um, improving our food systems, you know, building on what has been done before as well. Um, you know, I, I think that there are definitely aspects of food systems that we can work more on, which is really bringing people around the table to discuss. It's also to work across sectors, environment, agriculture, trade, health. Um, but it's also to acknowledge that a lot of work that's gone on before on value chain development or on land rights, uh, or on um, you know, improving gender issues. This is all, we're building on this even further. It's not that we start working on food systems at country level. I just wanted to make that one small point, but we can definitely improve and, and integrate our work better for the nutritional outcomes and protecting of the environment. In terms of donor commitment, um, I think it is maybe worth noting at this point that uh, strong discussions are ongoing and, and actions as follow up to the UN Food Systems Summit. Um, I'm sure many of the people on the line are aware that there is a coordination hub being uh, established, uh, housed in FAO headquarters in Rome, but it's in collaboration with uh, WFP and EFAD, the uh, Rome-based agencies, but also UNDP, UNEP and WHO. So really there is a commitment, and this is from both within the UN, but also with donor commitment also to, to ensure that there will be continued uh, work on sustainable food systems and support to countries. Um, to, so you know, there, are, there are definitely work in this area. And as I understand it, it's also coming with funding commitments. And, and just finally, I know that many governments in our region are also doing things bilaterally to support other countries as well um, in this area. And, and this morning, we had our European Commission on Agriculture meeting, and some of the countries were updating again, where we discussed transforming food systems, and they updated on some of the intent there as well. Thank you, Serge. Uh, thank you, Mary. I will actually uh, do a quick follow up on that one. I think it's uh, involvement of donors, I think also raises the point of other stakeholders. How can they engage in the work around food systems, either at regional level or at country level? Are there avenues through the IBC uh, for opening up to uh, other stakeholders, uh, academia, I think, thanks civil society organizations? Do you wish me to take this one? Yeah. Um, I mean, it's. <laughs> I guess we're we're very much promoting uh, the engagement of all non-state actors and academia and scientists and innovators, private sector, but really at the country level, I guess, where you know where that uh, where they they need to be engaged, discussing with um, governments and and really having. Um, actions that are working for the country but also working at local level as well there's also ongoing discussions also on local um, territorial approaches for example to uh, on how we produce food but also with the social and environmental aspects very much considered as well appropriate to that region or that local uh, setting within a country so and again um yeah this is very much promoted then involving the, the other actors beyond govern, government uh, at the country level. Over. Uh, and they're also, you, sorry, just sorry, Serge. I mean, Go definitely ahead. those actors are also involved when we are having uh, regional policy discussions 
in FAO and, and with other UN agencies, we're definitely including um, those and through the activities of the issue-based coalition, uh, we're including um, these other stakeholders that you mentioned and sectors. Uh, thank you, Mary. Uh, uh, again, sorry for the disruption that we've had. Uh, for me, it's a first experience with that, actually, uh, despite uh, almost two years of Zoom. Uh, uh, can you please, Mary, uh, turn your camera back on? I would also invite uh, other co colleagues, um, Arben um, and uh, Marit, uh, to uh, to turn their cameras on so that we can we can continue as as planned. Uh, uh, thank you so much. Um, Merit, I would uh, would you like to come in and talk about uh, UNECU's perspective and of the work of the IBC? Uh, and uh, while Mary is speaking, again, I invite colleagues uh, to uh, to think about your question, post your questions in the chat, um, uh, so that we can have uh, an interactive discussions. Any clarification that you would need uh, from um, uh, uh, Mary uh, or from Arben uh, in uh, in Albania, uh, Merit. Thank you so much, Serge, and thank you, Mary, for the excellent introduction of the IBC. I just wanted to come in and, and reinforce uh, some of the messages that Mary was, was saying. We were talking earlier about the wide-ranging topic that uh, food systems are, and that it's just so many, there's so many ministries, there's so many topic areas. And uh, for us as a regional entity uh, operating, is UN. ECE it stands for the Economic, Corpor uh, Economic Commission for Europe, sorry. And uh, so, so basically we are an entity that exists for regional corporations. So we're at, at, we operate at the regional level. Of course, we do some things at the country level, but we're, our mandate is regional. And uh, given that it's, it's really useful to have something like the IBC where we can coordinate with other entities who are specialized in agriculture. I, come from the trade side, uh, represent the Economic and Cooperation and Trade Division. Um, so it, it, it is very useful to be working in the IBC to have this platform uh, in the same region that we are working in to discuss with and know what's going on in, in FAO in, and in the related IBC uh, partners that, that Mary was presenting. And to see how we, we work, for example, on issues surrounding agricultural quality standards and uh, circular economy related issues. Uh, of course, ECE also has an environment division and, and, uh, and other related divisions uh, that are of interest uh, in the topics that are discussed. So for us, the IBC provides, it provides an entry point for coordinating, for collaborating, for avoiding overlap and, and finding synergies in, in, in our work. And, uh, and, on, and on related topics, it, it provides, it facilitates entry points for country level. And uh, also on our side, I think what we can offer is we can help connect to regional processes. Like we're, we're the host of the regional forum on sustainable development. We can connect to that and to other regional commissions where we have had a, a, a group in preparation for the food system summit and issue a joint policy brief with them. So we're able to connect, you know, different uh, groups of, of stakeholders um, and in the in the regional form of sustainable development also other stakeholders are invited the uh, like civil society and so, uh, so so i think these are some of the benefits that that we see and uh, so and we're so we're finding it very useful to be working with fao and we're also involved as as mary mentioned in in this study which depending on this topic you know might have might not have so much trade focus, but we, you know, we can bring in what we, what, what fits in the topic, right? And it's, it's wonderful to see this coming together. So those are my small observations. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. Uh, that's actually raised a point. I had a question uh, to, uh, to Mary and that, but I think it's uh, maybe better addressed to you. Uh, if, if there has been indeed exchange of lessons and experiences from the ECA region with other regions, right? Uh, Kind of curious if the example of the IBC in the ECA region is something that can be replicated in other regions or some learnings that other regions may have for uh, uh, for your region. And you, you did mention that so you work with other economic commissions. Uh, if you can talk a little bit about the exchange of experience and, and practices that happen between regions, between UN regions. Yeah, so so we, we're also in, in the group um, the, 
between the regional commissions, as I mentioned, and the coming year, ECE will be leading the cooperation with, with those regional commissions. Uh, there's a coordinating mechanism among regional commissions. So there's a lot of potential. I, I have, uh, uh, personally, I've been with ECE not so long, but I have been with the sister commission in Asia before this. <laughs> so I, I think, uh, Personally, I'm providing some connections also, but that's, that's less officially. Uh, but my since when my experience with ECE has not been so long, I can't really answer for how it has been earlier. Uh, but I do see clear potential in this. And I know, of course, that there are IDCs in the Asia Pacific region also, for example. Um, I, I can't answer right now if, if there's exactly an IBC on food systems there. I know there's one on environment, for example and climate. Um, so, so there are related IBCs, but I think the IBCs differ a little bit between regions. Um, but definitely, I, I, there is potential. I'm not so sure if it's fully used yet, but I think uh, there is potential in, in you know, sharing more experiences between the regions. And this is partly what we've started doing between the regional commissions, but actually outside of the IBCs, more in preparation for the Food System Summit. And we are preparing to or planning to follow up on that and we're keeping the IBC informed. So it's good to have these channels. Thank you, Mary, it's very, very insightful. Um, I will turn to, uh, to the audience. Uh, I see that we have uh, one hand raised, uh, Nenad Rava. Um, Nenad, would you like to come in? Okay, sorry, but um, the chat is not produced yet. Um, at least I'm not allowed to post anything. I cannot put my video on, so but it doesn't matter. So just very, uh, very quick, but maybe a, a, a important question. So um, from the perspective of joint program development and implementation, which is now one of the main instruments to support the broader UN development system reform, but also something that is uh, critical for having more integrated approaches. Uh, is there a role already or? You know, in the near future, for the uh, issue-based coalition to support uh, UN country teams to develop and/or implement, provide policy support to implementation of, of joint programs. Over. Right, thanks. Uh, thank you, Nenet. Uh, did you get the question, Mary? Um, as, as you're thinking through the question, Mary, I would like to say we, we do have other colleagues, uh, either from the IBC or other agencies that I see that are connected with us. Uh, uh, please feel free if you do have uh, also uh, points or, or uh, answers to this question to, uh, to come in. It's a question I think that's addressed uh, to, uh, to us uh, in the UN in general, not just to, uh, to Mary. Um, go ahead, Mary. Thank you, sorry. Yeah. Thank you for the question. Yeah, indeed. I mean, um, this is the uh, intention or the focus. I One of the documents I showed you on the presentation was a technical note that we, we prepared at the beginning to increase, um, let's say, common understanding of sustainable food systems and the different multifacets that we've all discussed a lot today already. And so part of that engagement with our UN country teams is to inform and to, uh, let's say, come up uh, to inform the UNSDCF processes, sorry to use the acronym, but yes, the joint program documents that are developed at uh, country level by the different members of the uh, UN country teams. So uh, indeed, this is the intention to, to, um, to inform, I guess, more coordinated and uh, uh, support and alignment um, to uh, the different ministries uh, that we engage with and, and ultimately to the government, the total government in, in our countries. But please, as Shosh said, maybe other colleagues want to add as well, but that is an in intention. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mary. Um, I, I hope that answered your, your question, and then uh, actually as a follow-up, Mary, it's, uh, I think it would be great to hear if there are resources actually that uh, the IBC is making available to strengthen system-wide capacity of staff on food systems, and I think that kind of resources would actually be useful for uh, developing joint programs at country level. Um, uh, are, there, are there any, any resources to strengthen staff capacity on, on food systems? 
um, um, I mean, uh, it's ongoing, not available yet, but yes, there are a number of, uh, there are a few different um, actions that I'm aware of that are being uh, dealt with also by the, the, the UN, the members of the IBC, maybe not fully as the IBC totally, but uh, there are, there is a recognition that yes, we need to uh, continue to build capacities among the UNCT, but also then subsequently to governments in terms of uh, tools and ways of working better on uh, yeah, integrated approaches and, and even, yeah, how do you analyze and, and work on these difficult policy issues and, and really gather evidence and data on them to be able to make and to understand the synergies and trade-offs that we talk about also in, in food systems. So definitely um, ongoing and yes, different that's part of the awareness raising and outreach activity of the IBC but we are in the process through other small projects and areas of work to improve uh, materials and capacity development um, to meet what you were saying as well Serge thank you uh, thank you um, I see um, Ninette has a follow-up in the chat Uh, no, that's Nadine. Uh, so um, uh, we'll, we'll be posting resources on the on the website uh, of um, the links to the resources made available by the IBC. Um, I don't see any further question or any hand raised, uh, uh, Mary. So I would I would ask you uh, for uh, in terms of uh, uh, final takeaways, if uh, as uh, as the IBC um, on on sustainable food systems, if there's any ask that you would have to agencies to the UN system to help advance the work, what would that be? I mean, I, I think one, um, one that we've already flagged a little bit is we do need to, to continue to work uh, at country level with the UN uh, country teams. I think uh, my colleagues like uh, Arben, uh, Mr. Kippy in, in FAO Albania office and, and in many other uh, UN offices across the region are, are also uh, pushing in the same direction and, and, and trying to improve the, the collaboration and, and joint working. And this is very much advancing quite rapidly, I think, uh, to, to improve working within the between the different agencies at the U at the country level. So I think this is one ask, I suppose, is that this is where the action really needs to happen. And it is happening. I don't want to, and you know, and what's also important for us in the issue-based coalition is very much um, to have the feedback from uh, the our colleagues working on the ground in the different agencies and through the resident coordinator office and we, we have one or two meetings a year to also listen to the needs from the country level because that's our main, uh, our main reason to be, is to support uh, real change and real impact at country level. And this is important for the issue-based coalition, but then it also feeds out some of the things my colleague Marit was saying. It also feeds out then into what we do as FAO in the region and what UNECE does in the region. And so, you know, we have this, uh, we have this regional work, the horizontal, horizontal work through the issue post coalition, but then we have our vertical work also down through our, our, our agencies. And um, so I, I think it's this iteration is also helping us align and uh, improve our coherence as the, the UN uh, family, let's say, at regional level. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. Uh, thanks a lot for uh, for that presentation and those insights. Indeed, uh, it's all about uh, the work at country level, uh, supporting our colleagues that are on the ground, uh, and ensuring that they have all the tools, resources, capacities that they need uh, to support government effectively uh, through integrated approaches, and particularly on the issues of uh, uh, food systems uh, transformation. I hope that uh, our colleagues joining us today have got a sense of uh, how wide uh, the, the scope of issues, the breadth of issues around food system is, 
and, and it touches on, on everything. I think it, in the answers to one of your polls where colleagues are coming from, I saw uh, as somebody from uh, uh, the International Organization for Migration, uh, which made me think as well of the issues of migrant workers uh, that are playing a particularly important role, for instance, in producing food in, uh, in some settings. So it's, it's, a, it's an all encompassing issues that requires all hands on deck. We all have to collaborate and work together. And, and as you said, I think it's a, it's a strong ask uh, that uh, we work better as, as a UN system uh, at regional level, and that trickles down to the country level as well as also from the global level where some of us sit uh, to ensure that uh, we provide effective support uh, at country level and food systems. Uh, I, my thanks as well to, um, to Arben and, and Julie in, uh, in Albania. Uh, thank you for, for joining us uh, despite the late hours. And to Marit, uh, to share the perspective from the UNEC, I think uh, this uh, drives from the point that uh, uh, the uh, issue-based coalition is really a coalition, it's just not FAO uh, working on food systems, but uh, FAO working with many other UN entities um, uh, because it, it is a joint effort. Thanks, Marit, for, uh, for joining us. Um, I would like to recognize as well uh, my colleagues, Joshua um, uh, Gimba from FAO was helped uh, organized this session and put it together. Uh, he's been uh, very silent in the background. Uh, thank you, Joshua, and thank you as well to uh, uh, our other colleagues uh, in, uh, that are supporting uh, uh, the, the IPPN at working level, uh, uh, from FAO, uh, from ILO, from UNICEF, from UNFPA, uh, this coalition of colleagues from the UN system that are putting this together, bringing these resources to you. Uh, we invite you uh, to continue the conversation through uh, the Integrated Policy Practitioners Network. Uh, you can access us through our website at the stgintegration.undp.org slash IPPN. Um, and through that website, you'll be able to access uh, uh, many of the resources that we are making available, including uh, uh, information resources from uh, the IBC and Sustainable Food Systems and, uh, and, and uh, Mary's presentation that uh, will be available there. Uh, and uh, we invite you as well uh, uh, to join the Committee of Practice on Sustainable Food Systems uh, to continue the conversation there as well. Um, um, Mary, um, I'll give you the last word uh, to close the meeting. So you I don't need to have the last word, but I, I do want to say, look, thank you very much for inviting us to join you in your in your practitioner, the IPPN Practitioners Cafe. I just wanted to say that it was a, a yeah, pleasure for us to be able Mary. to engage thank with you and your colleagues. Thank you for joining us, Mary. It's been a pleasure and uh, sorry for the glitches that we've had. Uh, I think it's been a very good session. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.